everyone, and welcome back to Classic Comics. So, the Snyder Cut is finally here, and this is going to be my review for the film. Now, this is probably going to be broken up into two videos, and there will be spoilers in this, by the way, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, you might want to do that first before watching this review. Now, I did see the 2017 Josh Whedon version, and I thought it was okay-ish. I didn't hate it, didn't really love it either. I will say that I think Snyder's version is better. But I'm not sure if it's really a fair comparison, because Warner Brothers wasn't going to let Whedon create a four-hour epic and release that in theaters, and they weren't going to give him an additional $70 million on top of the original budget. Now, I've stated in other videos, I have mixed feelings about Snyder's version of the DCU. It's not the version of the DCU I really wanted to see. And these aren't really the versions of the characters I wanted to see, but I didn't hate it. I respected the years of work that he put into building this universe and his particular vision for it. I do think that Snyder is a skilled filmmaker. His films tend to be very visually impressive, and he's very good at action set pieces. That's one thing I noticed while watching this video. The action is generally better, and visually the Snyder version is just more stylish and compelling. Now, I am aware of the comments that Snyder made about Geese and Gamers the other night. I'll probably make another video to address those, but I'm just going to focus on the film here. Now, the film starts with the death of Superman while fighting Doomsday, and his, I guess you'd call it his death cry, echoes across the world, and it awakens the three mother boxes, one in Cyborg's apartment, one in Atlantis, and one on Themyscira. Then we go to Bruce Wayne riding across a glacier on a horse to this remote village where he's hoping to find Aquaman. And it's it's one of those things, it's kind of like, Bruce, why are you doing this? You're a billionaire, you just ride in on a helicopter. But they try to justify it with some remark about how there's a storm and the ships and planes can't get in, I guess. But there is no storm. The seas are calm. I mean, if there was a storm, it's now gone. So again, why doesn't Bruce just fly in with a helicopter again? Anyway, this plays out pretty much like the 2017 version. He meets Aquaman or Arthur Curry, who's played by Khal Drogo, and makes his pitch to form a team, and Curry says no thanks and swims away. Now, one notable difference is that after Aquaman leaves, the villagers start singing for some reason. I don't really know why. It goes on a little too long, though, in my opinion. Then we see Martha Kent, and she is leaving the Kent farm, which is in foreclosure. Then we go to Metropolis, and we see Lois. She picks up some lattes at a coffee shop, and then she goes to the Superman Memorial, and she gives the lattes to the police who are guarding the place, and we learn that Lois has been visiting the memorial every day since Superman died. Then we go to London, and Wonder Woman stops a group of terrorists. This sequence, again, pretty much plays out like the 2017 version. This was a point where I really noticed the different action sequences. In Snyder's version, the action is really just more intense and really amped up. Diana is absolutely wrecking these dudes all over the place. Then we go to Themyscira, and the Amazons are watching over the mother box, and it activates, creating a boom tube. Parademons fly through, and then Steppenwolf appears. And then, again, this plays out similar to the 2017 version. Steppenwolf does look much cooler in this version, I will say that. More edgy, I guess you'd say, and more alien-looking. Hippolyta takes the box and makes a run for it to keep it away from him. Uh, the Amazons collapse the temple down on top of him, and in this version, the temple actually falls into the ocean with Steppenwolf in it. But that doesn't stop him, and he gets the box and leaves. Reinforcements arrive, but he boom tubes away before they can stop him. Now, Steppenwolf emerges into this desolate area somewhere in Russia. It's obviously supposed to be some kind of Chernobyl-like place. Steppenwolf says that it's toxic and there's an abandoned nuclear reactor, and nobody lives there. That's one distinct difference from the 2017 version, which in that version there was a village and there were still people living there. Then we go to Star Labs, and this is another difference from the 2017 movie. There's a lot more cyborg-related stuff in this version. We meet Dr. Silas Stone, who is Cyborg's father, played by 
Joe Morton, Miles Dyson himself. And he's studying the Kryptonian ship from Man of Steel, which is still sitting there in Metropolis. He leaves for the night, and then the janitor encounters a parademon, and it's searching for the mother boxes. They can sense it, and there's this container that had the mother box in it, but it's empty because Dr. Stone has taken the mother box to his place. Then we go back to Themyscira, and Hippolyta shoots a magic arrow that lands in Greece at this place called the Shrine of the Amazons. Now, the arrow uh, starts a fire at the shrine, and Diana sees a news report about it and realizes what it means. Then Diana goes to the shrine, and she uses the arrow to open up the secret door, and it leads to a big chamber underground that has these illustrations that tell the story of the first attempt by Apocalypse to conquer Earth and how it was stopped by an alliance between the ancient gods, the Atlanteans, the Amazons, and men, and they managed to drive the invaders away and capture the mother boxes. Then we go out to sea, and Aquaman saves a guy whose ship is sinking, and he takes him to this tavern somewhere and dumps him there, then he grabs a bottle of liquor, and we get that sequence where, you know, we all saw it in the trailers, where he, he downs the booze in slow-mo, and the walks out to the end of this pier, and the waves crash over him, and it looks really cool. Then he swims to Atlantis, and he goes to this abandoned area of ruins, and stops at this chamber where we see a statue. And if you've seen the Aquaman movie, you know the statue is Atlan, the first king of Atlantis. Then Volko, played by Willem Dafoe, arrives, and he implores Arthur to claim the throne, because his half-brother Orm is planning to attack the surface. Then Volko gives Arthur the trident of his mother, Atlanta, but Arthur makes it clear he's not interested in ruling Atlantis. Diana meets with Bruce and tells him about the first attack by Apocalypse. The sequence plays out pretty much like the version in the 2017 film, except in the flashbacks, it's actually Darkseid leading the army instead of Steppenwolf. And it's Darkseid that gets injured and has to retreat which I think really blunts the threat that Darkseid poses. If he's already been beaten, then it makes him seem less formidable. Also, in the 2017 film, Steppenwolf has been exiled from Apocalypse because he failed to conquer Earth. But here, it's Darkseid who failed, so Steppenwolf is still exiled, but we don't know why. They mention something about some kind of betrayal, but they don't really give any elaboration on it. Also, the images you've seen of Darkseid fighting all come from this flashback. He never actually fights the Justice League. Then she tells Bruce about the Mother Boxes, about how they were hidden away, and that they can be united and used to conquer the world. Then we go to Central City, and we meet Barry Allen, played by Ezra Miller, and he's applying for a job, and he bumps into Iris as she's leaving the place, and then she gets into a car wreck, but Barry saves her. The actress that plays Iris doesn't really get much in the way of lines. She's just kind of there. Now, Ezra Miller is playing Barry, but this isn't Barry Allen from the comics at all. I find him kind of annoying, really, and I really don't enjoy his parts of the movie that much. Then Steppenwolf captures some Atlanteans, and he has this mind probe creature that tells him where the Atlantean mother box is located. Then we see Bruce and Diana talking about getting the other heroes to join up, and Bruce goes to see Barry while Diana meets Cyborg. Now here's where we get more background on Cyborg. We see him playing college football. Uh, these are scenes that we all saw in the trailers. He scores a touchdown and wins the big game, but when he looks up in the bleachers, his mother is there, but his father isn't. As they drive home, they talk about his father, but then they're hit by another vehicle, Victor's mother is killed, and his body is badly mangled, leaving him only partly whole. Then Dr. Stone, desperate to save his son, uses the mother box and transforms him into Cyborg. This saves Vic's life, but leaves him deeply embittered and his mother dead. And now he can't play football, which is what he always wanted to do. And he's a freak, and he blames it all on his father. Then we get a sequence of Victor experimenting with his abilities flying, and manipulating computer networks. We learn that he can hack into any system. No firewalls or encryption can keep him out. And he could launch all the world's nuclear missiles if he wanted, or crash the world's entire economy. 
Then we go back to Central City, and we see Barry visiting his father, who urges Barry to stop trying to prove his innocence and get him out of prison, and instead start living his own life, which Barry doesn't want to hear. Then Barry goes back to his place, and then we get that scene from the first film, the 2017 version, where he meets Bruce and he agrees to join the team. Now, Diana is doing a web search on Cyborg. He detects it, so he sends her a message telling her to meet him. She arrives and tries to convince him to join the team, but he isn't interested. Cyborg then takes the mother box to his mother's grave, and he buries it there. While he's doing this, Dr. Stone goes to his apartment and is attacked by a parademon that was there looking for the mother box, and the parademon abducts him. In Atlantis, Steppenwolf arrives and attacks the Atlanteans, including Mera. Then Aquaman arrives, but he's unable to stop Steppenwolf, who takes the mother box and boom tubes away. Then we see Commissioner Gordon, played by J.K. Simmons. The Gotham police are getting reports of a winged creature attacking people, and the description sounds like Batman. So Gordon decides to speak with Batman. He lights up the signal, and Batman and Wonder Woman and Flash arrive, and they discuss the parademons. Cyborg goes back to his apartment and sees that a struggle took place and that his father is gone. And then he sees the bat signal in the sky, so he flies to join them and tells them about his father and the other Star Labs employees who've been taken. They suspect the parademons are operating from a place called Strikers Island, which is out in Gotham Harbor, and is abandoned, and they go there to find them. Now, during the film, uh, from time to time, Steppenwolf has been in communication with Desaad, who is another of Darkseid's servants, reporting on his progress. He tells Desaad that he has two of the boxes, and he has prisoners who can tell him where the third one is. Then we go to Stryker's Island, and we get that whole battle that takes place in the tunnels there, and it goes pretty much like it did in the 2017 version. A missile destroys a tunnel wall, and since they're under Gotham Harbor, the water starts pouring in, flooding the tunnel, but then Aquaman arrives somehow, <laughs> and uses his trident to slow down the water while the other, uh, while the others escape the tunnel. Steppenwolf returns to his fortress, and then the mother box gives him a vision that the anti-life equation is somewhere on Earth. Now, for those who don't know, in the fourth world lore, the lore of the new gods and dark side and all that, the anti-life equation is a mathematical formula that, if deciphered, can be used to control all conscious thought in the universe. And it's what Darkseid seeks above all else. Darkseid's all about control and order, and the anti-life equation is the key to controlling everyone. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and stop here, since this video, if I try to do the whole movie, it'll be too long. And I will have a second video that talks about the uh, second half of the film. Now let me know in the comments what you thought of the Snyder Cut. Did you think it was worth the wait? And while you're at it, please like this video and sub to the channel and hit the bell for notifications, and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching.